In this video, we're going to take a look at the standard normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So the way that we represent this here is we use Z to represent a standard normal variable. We use Z. This follows a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation and a variance of one. So our variance there is one. So like we said then, to represent a standard normal variable, we use the letter Z. So to work with the standard normal distribution, we must code the original random variable. Let's say we have a random variable, let's say X. So given, so given X, which follows a normal distribution, with parameters then of mu and sigma squared, then we can code this random variable x here using the following formula. So we code here. Using the following formula. So the formula then is given as z is equal to the random variable x here. Minus the mean mu. And then we divide this here by sigma. Okay, the standard deviation. And you also need to be aware then that for a standard normal curve and a standard normal variable, so again, if I use this standard normal variable here, Z, so using Z then, so that is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of one, then the probability, so let's just write this down again underneath, so the probability here so the probability p of our standard normal variable here z being less than some given value let's say little z then this can be expressed or written as phi of z so this can be expressed So this can be expressed as phi of z. So that's phi of this given value here. So like we said, then this represents this probability here. And then finally, you may sometimes be required to find z values that correspond to given probabilities. And this can be done in one of two ways. So we can either use the formula book or by using the inverse normal distribution on your calculator. Either way is fine, but let's just discuss both ways then. So for the formula book, you'll have this here um, towards the end of the formula book. So this is the table of values then. So how does this work? Well, let's say we want to find them. So find Z here. Okay. Or let's say we have then the probability that our standard normal variable z is greater than little z and this is equal then to 0.025 okay so it's just worth pointing out then for the formula book what this tells us then is the probability of our standard normal variable z being greater than some value here z and that is equal then to 1 minus phi of z and that is equal to p okay so like we can see then the probability of z being less than z that's expressed as phi of z so in that case then the probability that z is greater than little z that is 1 minus phi of z okay and for the formula book that's how it works so we're looking now at this here okay just highlight that here. So that's for the formula book. So in that case then, if we want to find the little value of z here, such that this probability is equal to 0 0.025, all we need to do then is look down the probability columns here. So P and P, these two columns. And all I'm looking for then is 0 0.025. So I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, and 0 0.1. So it's not in this column. 
So we now look down this column here, I've got 0 0.05, not that one, but then I have 0 0.025, perfect. So that's the probability that we need here. So we'll circle that. And then what Z value corresponds to this probability here? Well, that is 1.96 there. Okay. So therefore, little Z is equal to 1.96 there. Okay. Now, like I said, you can also do this using your calculator here. So using a calculator, So how does this work here? So I just quickly grab my calculator here. So the first thing that I do then is I go into stats mode. And then what I do is I click distribution. So we have distribution. So I click distribution. So what I get now is a number of different distributions. So the one that we want here is the normal distribution. If I click norm, the normal distribution. And once I press that, I get a number of different options again. So I get MPD, NCD, or I get inverse N. So what I want here is inverse N. So now what we're looking at here is the inverse normal distribution. So in this case, then I get asked for a few different things. So what I'm asked for here is the tail. I'm asked for the tail. I'm asked for the area. I'm asked for sigma, the standard deviation, and I'm asked for mu, the mean. Okay, so mu and, um, oh, sorry, sigma and mu, nice and straightforward. Sigma, the standard deviation is one, and then the mean mu is zero. So for the tail and the area here, that depends on what you're looking to find. So in this case here, because we're looking for the probability that this um, standard normal variable z is greater than this value z here. The tail then is pointing towards the right. Imagine it was an arrow, it'd be pointing towards the right. So I put the tail here to right. And then for the area here, this is the probability that we're looking to find for. So here it's 0 0.025. So I put the area as 0 0.025. Okay. So I quickly put that into my calculator here. What we should obviously expect here then is I get the same value for Z. And if you do that here, then what I get, so therefore X inverse, that is equal to 1.95996398. So in other words, if I run that to three significant figures here, we get 1.96 there. Okay. So Z equals 1.96. So like you can see, you can do it in either of those two ways. Um, I just prefer to use a calculator, but either way is absolutely fine. Okay. And there we have it. So we're not going to run through any practice questions for this video. Um, in terms of the standard normal distribution, the applications of the standard normal distribution will become more apparent in the next video when we're looking to find unknown values of mu and sigma. Okay. But like I said, then that was everything for this video. And that brings the end of this video on the standard normal distribution.